today is all about ping irons. We've got three ping irons released in the last couple of years, the i525, the i230, and the i59. We've got Thomas here to test them. We'll see what TrackMan tells us about each of these three irons. And if you haven't yet, golfers, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, and you tell us in the comments which of these three irons you like best. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Ping irons today, Thomas. We've got three of them here um, with the new addition of I-230, finally replacing I-210 after a, a long time. Um, we wanted to see kind of how it fits into this sort of new age of ping irons here. So, because if you remember, I I-500, excuse me, was the player's distance model, so to speak, for so many years. Um, I-525 has replaced that. I-59 now kind of replaced iBlade last summer in 2021. Now they've got I-230 here. So uh, really impressive looking line of irons here from Ping, but we got to see the performance here too. Yeah, they all look really, really clean. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at the back of them here. Yeah. I-230, very, very clean. Um, yep. And it's just, they're sexy irons. I'm excited yeah. to see how they how they test. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've, done, they've done, you know, they got the A plus on the looks and the appearance, I think. Um, you know, we've done initial testing on I-59 and I-525 and I-230. You can check out the Swing Report videos on our channel for the initial testing results. But for our head-to-head -head today, uh, we wanted to put them all in the same test and really see the differences. I mean, in loft, we've got 30 and a half with the I-525, 33 with the I-230, and then 34 with the I-59. So we imagine I-230 and I-59 will probably perform closer together in terms of, you know, the, the distance and, uh, you know, the, the spin and things like that. But uh, we did just want to see in terms of the spectrum here, how close is I-230 to player's distance versus like a closer to a blade like I-59. Yeah, and if you're interested in any of these ping irons, this would be a great comparison. You could compare the differences in spin and ball yeah. speed and even just what type of iron that you really fit into, because this is going to fit a wide spectrum of golfers. Right. I mean, these three irons cover a lot of players just, I mean, in, in that three, but uh, I think today we can dial it in a little bit more. We'll have Thomas hit the shots on TrackMan, and uh, we'll show, well, all the data that TrackMan gives us here. So are you ready to hit some shots? Let's do it. But we'll see if it comes back. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. A little, a little extra spin, but that's just open face spin, yep. not uh, strike related spin. That'll do. Felt a little softer. That looked like the same exact shot. There you go. Ooh, 6,000 that time. There we go. Yeah. Just keep doing that. Oh, that's fine. It's kind of far left. All right, Thomas, um, testing complete there. Three ping irons, um, I-525, I-230, I-59. So before we get into the numbers, give me your thoughts on the look and feel. I imagine that progression was kind of interesting because the I-525 has a forged element to it. I-230 is a cast iron. Then you go back to kind of a more forged iron with I-59. So tell me about uh, what you, I guess, what your feedback is there. Yeah, I mean, looking looking at them, it almost like went from big brother to small brother. Yeah. Like they almost looked identical looking down. Yeah. That just got smaller and smaller in, in profile. Yeah. I noticed with the I-59, maybe just a touch taller to finish with, but mm -hmm. yeah, they they looked very similar looking down. Right. I'd say that 
I-230, maybe just you know, instead of 210, had a little more rounder edges yeah. to it. Yeah, there's uh, some refinements made from I-210 to I-230, and we have a comparison on that coming here soon on the channel, but we did uh, uh, we do notice that the I-230 longer irons are, sh are smaller yeah. um, than the I-210 longer irons, and obviously we're doing seven irons today, so it's not noticeable, but um, that's one thing that Ping for sure uh, made sure to kind of clean up a little bit with the I-230s. And then numbers wise here too, I think I noticed, um, you know, a couple of things. Uh, we obviously we talked about the loft 30 and a half, 33 and 34, but um, we see that jump from the I-525 um, going from kind of a player's cavity up to the player's distance. But I-230 and I-59, some subtle differences, but nothing, I guess, crazy. Right, yeah, I mean, actually you can see the ball speed, 0 0.1 miles how yeah. fast of I-59. Now, that's because I have that last shot that was a little bit further left. Yeah. If you take a look at the, I guess, the dispersion pattern, uh, it's just a touch user error. You can see I-230, it was just staying dead straight from yeah. there. I think it had about four feet on average of curve to the left. Mm -hmm. So I was just playing my little in-to-out swing and just kind of staying right there. Yeah. With the I-59, I had a couple a little further left, and that's just, the face is going to be a little bit more shut, which is going to increase that ball speed just, yeah. to, just a touch. Mm -hmm. But you know, otherwise, yeah, it's, there wasn't too much separation between those two irons in, the, in any of the numbers, really. You can see right. here, spin, pretty similar. Yep. Just a touch more spin with the I-59, which you'd expect with one degree yep. more loft there, and just a touch, maybe a yard shorter. Right, yeah, and that we kind of can uh, assume that that's loft related a little bit. Um, one thing, I am looking at the map here, and you can see how consistent the distances were for really all three clubs. Uh, you really notice that the most with actually how similar the shapes in general are from I-525 and I-59. Right. You know, a couple left, couple right, but you're not going far when you go left, right? You're not, that's not that, if you pull a little bit, it doesn't sail deep on you. It's still a pretty consistent distance for you. And the same thing if you maybe miss right, a lot of times the tendency is those go a little bit shorter as well. Not really seeing that here. Yeah, the I-525 especially is impressive, the fact it's going further, and you yeah. can see, I mean, this is between 190 and 200. This is about four yards set yep. between the shortest and the longest. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's impressive. I think it comes down to these Micromax groups. Mm -hmm. I think that's yep. a huge, huge plus that, that uh, you know, Ping has with, the, with these irons. It's yeah. just consistency. And, you know, all, all it took with, was with I-230 is maybe they had one more that I turned over and then it would have been the exact same. Right, right, it would have, yeah. I think it's, that's fascinating to see. And all three of these irons do have those Micromax grooves that you talked about. And so to see that kind of consistency come out in a test like this is pretty cool. Um, that is what you're looking for, especially, a, and I, I mean, you were talking about a sh golf shots that are going 200 yards to see it be that consistent um, right. shot over shot. Um, and, you know, maybe a slight miss here or there as you were hitting the I-525, but to see the distances amount to being so similar is a really good sign for golfers that might be getting fitted to that iron. I think it's interesting looking at I-59 here, you can see it actually flew the highest, yeah. 122 feet in the air. I thought the I-525 might have been the one that flew the highest, but I mean, we were talking within yeah, yeah, three it's feet very similar. Of, mm -hmm. of them there too. I thought that was interesting, but you know, I-525, 4888 spin, mm -hmm. and then you can see as we increase the loft with the I-230 and then I-59, you see that, in that spin you know, increase a little bit more. Yep, same with launch angle as well. So there are those trends that emerge between kind of the, the, the different categories that these irons fall into, but kind of cool to see where I-230 falls in between I-525 and I-59. Uh, but I think, you, you know, we kind of assumed it'd be closer to I-59. Uh, but then just to see the consistency factor um, with all three irons was really right. cool, I think. I think uh, it's, it's interesting you're looking at this, this gapping here. I, I think it's interesting that Pink doesn't have you know, a club that's going to go maybe go in, in this mm, yeah. general area here. Yeah. So closer to maybe that 185, 190 area. Right. But then you have to remember with Ping, you have retrospect lofts. Yes, you do. And you have, so that is where you could retrospect I-525, or yep. you could power spec the I-230 to yep. help with regards to gapping. Right. I think Ping does a great job, and you can see that stuff on the website right. with regards to the loft. So really, they do have all the yardage yep. covers with these three different sure. clubs. Yeah, I mean, they cover a wide range of golfers. I mean, every loft that you might need. So these three irons, I mean, I, I can't imagine I-230 is gonna uh, you know, be an exception, right? I mean, these I-525 and 59 have been awesome in the fitting bay. I-230 would be no exception. So golfers, make sure you schedule a fitting uh, if you're interested in any of these three irons from Ping. 
one of our master traders will get you set up uh, with the right iron set in your bag. You'll start playing better, you'll start hitting uh, some more greens in regulation, and your scores will be lower. So, Thomas, thanks for hitting all the shots. Really good stuff today. I think, uh, I mean, any ping loyalists out there really like this one.